join us as they um, as they are able. So let's just for a few minutes this morning, um, let's just walk on the presence of the Holy Spirit. First of all, let's thank him for the grace, for the grace, for the grace. It's one thing to start something, it's one thing to start a journey, it's another thing to finish it. So let's just thank him for the grace to have made it this far. Let's just open our mouths and begin to give him praise. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Oh, we give all the glory and praise to you for bringing us this far. Who are we without you, Father? Who are we without you? Without you, Father, we just say thank you. Maso kalande breketa mesene do redosh medege paridani saliato sande rababa tegalisa so bregete niza kaberina sadeliada. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Also, ladies, if you can come up mute, this is day twenty. We've been saying this from day one. Please come up mute if you can. Maso separe da kambo breka bele kambo sete niga bayasa arada zana kalia so se Lord we thank you for bringing us this far reda koba abena se sadra bada kaline late zaga dosh ke barata me sede dana kalia no oh we just give all the glory to you rabata kabrege teke brata zosa katania leta kazo zeke te sagata brota lege te but we know it was not by power neither by Might, but by your spirit within us, oh God, we just say thank you. Esena kaberi asizali satenande le kato mari batadiga kashande bregedeke so nepis kamaru kamelido simbra bapitane karino saliande ege maruda baso ziga patiri amese brakadome alemande barati give suzeni ate lambre da kazuze. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Breba tame zakalita desanonde barate kesezia le kata. Rabato, our mouth will never tire of giving you praise. We will never tire of giving you thanks. We just say thank you, Father. Barate make zone barate geseme. For you indeed have not called us to seek you in vain. We just say thank you, Lord. Mabasara gina lendo sepe gabamina sepe. Mabaya kate nega gora tiza sista bega katili da tezege telia maro baka tezege telia ize na kombra tezege telia imbe rada bamo. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. We are going to the 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 the to 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 the Over to the Mahan, 
Every single day, 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 every single Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. We thank you, Father, because I know that he's ready to do a great work in our midst this morning. You see, the beauty with God is he indeed is a rewarder. That's what the Bible lets us know. He's a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. And that's what we've done so far up until today, day 20. We have come each morning to seek him diligently. And the Bible says he's a rewarder. It's one thing to pay someone their due. It's another thing to reward them as a result of your, your, your own abilities. So when you see someone saying, oh, you know, maybe someone miss, is, is missing something. If you find this object, please bring it to me. There's a reward of X amount, you know, that I will give to you. That is a reward. That's not payment. That is a reward. And the Bible lets us know that God is a rewarder. That means he's, he's going to reward based on the scale of his, his majesty, his largeness. He's not rewarding based on, okay, this is what you did. Therefore, here's your due. No, he's rewarding based on who he is. So I thank you, Father, that every woman who has gathered here from the first day, even until now, that you indeed will reward each and every one of us. Our year will never be the same like previous years in the past in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you. This morning, we're going to be taking a few prayer points. And really, it's centered around a single thing that um, the Holy Spirit showed me as I was preparing for the prayer session. And I was just trying to get direction as, as far as, you know, what he was saying and what he wanted to do with us this morning. And I saw a brief flash. And almost immediately, the Holy Spirit helped me understand exactly what that was about. And it's Psalms 23, verse 5. The first part of it, very simple. He says, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Initially, when I saw the flash, I was trying to figure out what is this? And then he explained, this is exactly what he's trying to say. In this mm. year, this is what God is saying to us. This is his commitment to us this year. Mm. That he will prepare a table before us, even in the presence of our enemies. Amen. Many of us have labored. Many of us are laboring in sectors where it feels like those that are against us are more than those that are for us. Mm. We are laboring in sectors where it feels like we should not naturally get the advantage because yeah. people like us are not, we don't show up there. Mm. First of all, simply because we are women, right? Or other yeah. reasons. So we're laboring in hard territories. And we're doing our best. We're just showing up, doing our best to be diligent. Some of us, the reason we're even facing the difficulties because of our position is our stand with God. Mm. Some of us, people just assume that this, one's, this one doesn't know better. So, you know, let me just oppress this one. I don't forget my story, even in this very corporate America. You labor, you work, you find that you are working with people who you are doing even more than they are but they seem to be the only ones getting ahead mm. because somebody has positioned themselves and decided that 
I, I don't I don't feel the need to to bless you or favor you or or, I, or allow you pass. I don't to God. And instead of even him letting that individual go off into some far you know land where it's like they don't even know if he was in that same company where the blessing came and overspeed it it was massive. It, the, mm. the news of it rang. And just in case he didn't hear, because he had gone to a different team, I made sure to send it just so he knows that Amen. against your best intentions, this has happened for me. Mm. My father and the Lord will give a testimony of a time where he was skipped multiple times at his job simply because he took a stand for God. And the person who had it in his power to occasion his promotion decided, I will not promote you. And he went to God and God showed up for him. And the same man who swore that over his dead body, he would never be promoted in this organization was the same person who used his hand to hold the pen to sign up his promotion. Amen. And again, like I said about God, God doesn't pay God rewards. So whereas it should have just been a single promotion, it ended up being a double promotion and backdated salaries that were then released to him. Amen. So I don't know who has been working on a certain project in a certain job, in a certain industry, something, I don't know what it may look like. And it seems like you're not progressing. God's word to you this morning, please hear it and hear it well in your spirit, is that he's preparing. He, in fact, he has prepared that table for you in the presence of your enemies. So you mm -hmm. don't have to run away. There was a time in my life I thought the answer to, if you are you know, facing you know, hard situations or the place is not, okay, run away. No, you're not gonna run away. In that very place where you have experienced that oppression, in that very place where you have experienced the limitation, that is exactly where he's preparing that table. So we're going to open our mouths this morning and we're going to declare this promise that he has shown us as his heart for us this morning. That Father, in the name of Jesus, this year, indeed, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You may think, oh, I don't even have any human enemies. Or like, I'm, I'm, I'm a sweet person. I'm friends with everybody. My dear, even if you don't find human beings to, that are your enemy, the enemy, Satan himself, <laughs> is enough of an enemy. Mm. So we open our mouth and we pray this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, prepare a table before me, even in the presence of my enemies this year. Let's open our mouth and pray that prayer. <laughs> that table that you have prepared for us, oh God. You are the place of the Lord of those that seek you so God. Thank you for my table that is loaded for me all this Let that be my table at home. Leave us for the Lord. We don't look on that table. We can't push our book or more. We can't get to it. 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 We can not get to it 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 we can not
Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, as we're praying this prayer, I remember the story of David's men in the Bible when when he um uh, I forget where they were, but then he uh, saw this well and he was like remembering, you know, in his youth when he was like, oh, I remember when I was a child and, you know, I used to drink from this well. And he said, oh, that one might give me a drink of this well, you know, and it was just a desire in his heart. And he had these men that had been training with him. And, you know, when they heard that that was what David wanted. I think there were three of them, right? And they went there. And I think the Philistines, you know, the enemy, they were arrayed around that well. But you know what? These men somehow, I don't even know how, three of them against the whole army, they risked their lives. They went out to that well and they were able to draw water. How? I don't know. Because, you know, what, obviously whoever is drawing is not fighting. So three of them somehow against this army were able to go out there and fetch that water and fought their way through until they got to David with that drink of water that he desired. This is the extent that, you know, humans went for the desire of one person, human beings, mm. human beings. How much more God? Mm. Please keep that in mind. A whole army, three men were able to power through, get that drink of water simply because their master said he wanted a drink. Mm. And they navigated their way, fought through every kind of, um, opposition and got to him no man down they got to him with that water this is what a human being can do just to fulfill and satisfy the need of another how much more mm. our heavenly father how much more the great i am how much more the mighty man in battle i want us to carry this mindset as we go through this year that this is his commitment to us that he will indeed be has in fact he has prepared the table that is all our own task now is to show up and speaking of showing up, this is the next prayer point we're going to be taking this morning. Because when we look at that chapter, it starts from verse one. You know, so if we see in verse five, it's saying, okay, he prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemies. But if we try to look at the beginning of this thing, it opens up by saying, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Mm. Essentially, receiving this bounty is dependent on the Lord being your shepherd. It is dependent on that. That is it. It's that simple. And if you understand the way, you know, it, it works between the shepherd and the sheep, the sheep literally live by the instruction of the shepherd. He points in this direction, they go. He says, stop here, they stop. That's literally the pattern. That's the life of the sheep. So we have prayed this morning. We have received this table. We have declared it as our portion this year. But you know what? It's going to be dependent on Jesus actually being a shepherd indeed. Not a companion, mm -hmm. not somebody who's coming along the ride with us. It's going to be dependent on him being a shepherd. So I'm going to ask this morning, because the shepherd is constantly giving direction to sheep. He's constantly giving instruction to sheep. Let them know where they can camp and eat before continuing the journey. Set water before them, but they must be listening to what the shepherd is saying. So he can't be saying, okay, this is where we, you know, we stop. And then they're running and saying, no, in front. So I'm going to ask God for, you know, something this morning, because like I said, the natural disposition of a shepherd is someone giving direction to others, giving instructions to others. So there is an instruction that God has for you this year that you need in order to enjoy the bounties of this table. There is a particular instruction based on him being a shepherd that's guiding us, guiding us to this table. So we're going to ask God this morning. To help us understand what that instruction is. When God gives, you know, a promise, when God gives a prophecy, there's usually an instruction that backs it. And it's different for everybody. So we can't go based on a templated um, approach. We've taken certain prayers, you know, um, in the last few days about two different widows. Two different widows. So you would think because their situation is the same, if they employ the same strategy, it will work for them. That's not true. There's a specific instruction for each person. For the widow that, uh, uh, that God sent Elijah to, the instruction for her was that little oil that you have left, take it and go bake something for me to eat. That was her instruction. For the other widow who Elisha encountered, the instruction was that oil you have, go get more jars and spread it across those jars. Mm. Different instructions. So if God is going to be our shepherd this year, it means that we will have to live by his instruction. So let's just take a couple of minutes to pray that Father this year, first of all, 
help me understand what your instruction is for me to prosper in the way you've described as far as this table, this bountiful table that is set before me. Help me understand what your instruction is and the grace to follow it in the name of Jesus. Let's just open our mouths and ask for that. Father, I ask that you open the eyes of understanding to perceive what the specific as as we were taking this prayer point another uh prayer just dropped in my spirit you see that same formation of the sheep and the shepherd here's the thing if for any reason a shepherd along that path or in that in that group in that company for one reason or another is deaf it doesn't matter if the shepherd is blowing is you know like making a sound like blowing a trumpet or whatever and saying like we're going left or we're going right if that sheep is deaf there's no way he can hear and you know that there's sometimes that you know sheep they can have this overgrowth of their uh the wool, you know, it just grows so much. And it, I don't know if we've seen that picture where it's like it practically covers them. So it's possible that that thing can even overgrow to a point of like obscuring their vision. And so even when the, you know, shepherd is, you know, pointing in a certain direction, they may not see. And they just continue on the same path that they've been going on because they haven't seen, you know, any other guidance to do otherwise. So I just picked it in my spirit right now because this is the one thing that might be some of us issue. It's not that we don't want to obey God. So we're going to ask God to, you know, help us address every kind of spiritual deafness or blindness that might obscure us, that might hinder us from hearing this instruction. Because the thing is, when God is speaking, unfortunately, it's not like he's speaking English. The way I'm saying, oh, this and that, you can hear me. God speaks in his own language and our own spiritual you know, organs of perception must be working just the way we have human ears that if they don't work well, you don't hear what people are saying. That's the same way you, you have a spirit and there are organs in that spirit that are able to then communicate with the spirit realm, God who is spirit and we communicate with him in spirit. So if your ears are closed, if your spiritual eyes are closed, your spiritual ears are closed, God may be shouting, God may be waving and you won't matter, you won't hear it. You won't see it. So we're going to be coming against every kind of deafness or blindness spiritually that might block us from seeing or hearing the instruction God is releasing for us to follow this year to bring us into a bountiful place. Let's just open our mouth and just speak against every kind of spiritual deafness and blindness. Ask God to open our eyes and ears to perceive and to hear him 
very clearly in the name of Jesus. We needed this year. We need that clarity. Sekatome Ariba Sate Mande Reka Kalimande Sidas Korea Makala Batame Gete Zoka Breka Make Matalia Ambarate Ambre Bakadwas Nesta Kabrida Batema Luda Sapra Uba Kalinansia Nete Brida Bokote Nansa Braga Daka Dokote Rabba Baba Baba Neketela Kakobre Bede Masko Sekelia Rabba Baba Baba Dokote Amen. Amen. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask for your mercies that everyone here who needs their eyes to be open, I ask that you wash their eyes, Lord Jesus, with eyes of, that you open their eyes, that they may see that which you are showing them. Father, for everyone whose ears has been blocked or cluttered and they are having, they may have any problem hearing you clearly, Father, I ask that you pop open those spiritual ears, that they will hear you clearly when you speak to them in the name of Jesus. For every woman who's represented here, let there be an end, thank you, Jesus. Let there be an end to every form of spiritual deafness or blindness that has hitherto kept them from hearing what you're saying, from seeing where you're leading them in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 The next prayer point we're taking is still centered on that Psalm 3, verse 5. You know, it says, you know, the Lord is preparing. He said he has prepared a table before us, even in the presence of our enemies. But you see what the thing is this, despite the fact that God has prepared a table, and we, I'm sure we understand that when God prepares things, when God says he's giving us things, right? It's not that he's coming on earth to build a table, taking, a, you know, taking wood to knock things together. When God speaks these things, he's speaking about things that he has made available for us, you know, in heavenly places. That's what the Bible says, right? It says we have been blessed with all, you know, spiritual blessings in heavenly places. So this table that he's preparing for, for us, you know, he's already made it ready and it is, you know, heavenly places. The issue that, you know, I want us to tackle in this one prayer point is that of capacity, capacity, capacity. Because despite the fact that God has prepared a whole table, the reality is some of us, the capacity we are currently operating at can only manage a spoonful. It can only manage a plate at best, a plate. Whereas what, what God said he's prepared is a whole table spread. So that's why sometimes it's like, you know, yes, the Bible said this, the word came forth and he said he's prepared a table for me. But when, you know, I'm looking around me, it seems that, I'm only just enjoying a spoonful of, of, of something, of, of whatever it is. I'm only getting a plate's worth and it's capacity. It's capacity. We see of that widow. But Elisha gave that instruction to when she said she had only that jar of oil and he said, well, go borrow some, some more jars. Go borrow some more vessels and fill them. And she filled them till she got to the last one. And she asked her son, said, bring one more. And he said, there's no money. He said, and the oil stopped. It stopped. Once she hit her capacity, it stopped. So, so many of us, the issue that we have to tackle going into this year is that of capacity. Early this year, as I was coming into this year and just trying to pick the direction of God, that was one of the things that I, um, I picked very clearly in my spirit. I heard it. And I just picked it very clearly, like this year is a year that will kind of separate or make clear, you know, the difference between those who have built capacity and those who have not. I don't know why, but that was just what I heard very clearly that this year will show a difference between those who have built capacity and those who have not. So we need to take that prayer. Because as much as we claim certain things, if we don't have the capacity for it, we cannot receive it. It will, con it will continue to be in heavenly places. If we ever go check our account, it will be there. Nobody will touch it. That's all it will be over there. So we're going to open our mouths this morning and ask God for the grace 
to expand our capacity. Because it's the capacity we make available that is able to then fill. So let's open our mouths and ask for grace, grace, grace for capacity. It's not too late. It's not too late. We still have time for those of us who can look at ourselves and honestly say that, mm, of a truth, I've tried, I was trying, but I, I, I don't think I've yet, you know, built the capacity for this thing that I'm believing for. Some of us are asking God, oh, I, I want my income to, you know, 10x or 100 times. But the honest truth is the current capacity we have cannot carry it. It cannot. So let's open our mouths and ask God for that grace for capacity. Whether it's capacity in terms of physical space, capacity in terms of our own skills, our own self-development, whatever that looks like. Let's open our mouths and ask God for that grace this morning. Because the thing is, like I've, I've been pointing out is some things we see and we confess, if we don't have the capacity, if we're not ready for it, if we don't have, you know, the posture, the <clears throat> appearance of the person who that kind of thing, you know, can make itself present in, in, in that person's life, then we may keep confessing it, but we don't see it. And so it's why when we pray, we depend on the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible says the Holy Spirit is an intercessor. Because he helps us pray accurately. He helps us pray correctly. So like I've given an example before, we might be praying and saying, oh God, you know, I, I want a car and, you know, God give me a car. But then when we go to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit helps us pray, what the Holy Spirit is then saying is, Father, teach this lady how to drive properly. Because we think that our problem is a car, but what he realizes is that you don't have a car yet because God is trying to protect you. Because that the way you drive, you are, you are still driving like a, like a, like a dog. So he's saying you need the grace to outline, address your you know driving habits or driving skills or whatever. Then you can get this fancy car, whatever it is that you're looking for. Because at least then you won't wreck it. So we're going to be praying, like I said, still in line with the same scripture of God preparing this table before us in the presence of our enemies. Oh, I love it. I love it when God does stuff like that. Instead of him to bless you and just say, you know what, just sit here quietly and enjoy it. There's no in the presence of your enemy. The next prayer point we're gonna be taking is on divine strategy. 
divine strategy. And we're going to be looking at the life of Jacob because Jacob's life is exactly a description of this blessing, preparing someone a table in the presence of their enemy. We know the story of Jacob in 31 and yeah, Genesis 31 and 32, where he labored for Laban for years. And from the onset, Laban just already started cheating him. So initially he started laboring for a wife. Laban cheated him, gave him the wrong wife, had to work seven more years for the right wife. Even as he was working for him, Laban kept cheating him over and over. And Jacob just kept being faithful, kept being diligent and working. And then Jacob realized that he was at the point in time where he needed to go off into his own thing and go, you know, lead his own life with his family. And he came to Laban and said, see, I've worked hard for you and I've been good. Like you can't even say I've done anything wrong. Even times when, you know, natural disaster occurred, like a wild animal came and maybe stole a sheep from the company. I paid for it. I didn't come to you to tell you, hey, as we're going for pasture, you know, this wolf or whatever lion, whatever animal came and killed, you know, X number of sheep. I bore the loss. So I served you very faithfully. And so you would think Laban would be like, wow, wonderful. What a great man. So Jacob is saying, you know what? I'm not even asking for much, but I want to just go through your flock and take the speckled ones, the, the you know, strict ones, just the ones that look a certain kind of way. And I will go about my business. But Laban decides to cheat him yet again. Takes those same animals that Jacob just asked for and puts like three days journey between him and them. I say, it's fine. Yeah, go, go get what you, you, you say you wanted to get. What are we going to get? You already took him out of the flock. And God showed up for Jacob, gave him a strategy that allowed him to breed animals in that same group that looked nothing like the description of what he said or what Laban said he can be entitled to. But God gave him a divine strategy that allowed him breed animals. In fact, the ones he bred that fit that pattern of what Laban had agreed for him to take ended up being stronger than the other ones that were in the flock. And of course, that thing pained Laban to no end. But you see what? That's what happens when God prepares a table for you in the presence of your enemy. They can see, they can be mad, but they can't do anything about it because it's God that has blessed you. So as mad as Laban was, he could not do anything about it. He intended to cheat him. He intended to take advantage of him, but God, that was it, but God. And we didn't even see how it happened initially. We're like, ah, when this, who told this guy what to do? It was in chapter 32 that he was speaking with his wife and said, an angel of the Lord came to me in the night in a dream and showed me how to do this thing. It was based on that divine strategy that I was able to make a portion for myself in this disadvantage. So our prayer this morning is for God to reveal to us and give us our divine strategy. Because like I said, some of us are laboring in in, in areas that naturally there is nothing available for us. What we have right now, we need to even be thanking God that we have it. Because normally there's not supposed to be any portion for us in that space. But there is a divine strategy we can receive that will help us secure a portion. This week, we're, we're you know, focused on our career, we're focused on our work, we're focused on our business, I, you know, the works of our hands, whatever that looks like. And I know there's no one person here who enjoys working and feeling like you, you just can't break through. So that is our prayer this morning for God to open our eyes to the divine strategy that we need to secure our portion, to enjoy this bounty. Let's open our mouth this morning. The Bible says there is a path, but no found nowhere. So no matter how it looks like that industry, oh, you know, there's nothing new here. It's all been done. Listen, I don't want us to ever get into that situation where we feel like there's really nothing more to do here. Everything has been discovered. Everything has been done. And I know that it can feel that way. You know, every day you open it, there's some new founder doing something. This, you know, interesting technology has been done or this, you know, line of business. That is not our business at all. Because there is a divine strategy we can have that allows us to do things differently. 
and I've told people before, I said that you don't, you're not even required to reinvent the wheel. All you need is one slight, one degree of difference from what everybody else is doing. That's mm. what makes the difference for you. You don't have to, to, to do something brand new. You don't have to go somewhere and be asking God, open my brain. Let me know something that, it, it doesn't have to be that. If God gives you an idea that does not exist on earth today, that's great. But God can literally give you just one degree of difference from how everybody else in that space does their thing. That's what differentiates your own work. That's what brings people to you. So we're asking God this morning for the bound strategy that we need to separate us, to separate us. Let's open our mouth and pray that this morning. Seka leta brande gasos de mande rida kavilia ziza kate mori evans kilabre ande moto meke zanda raga kume ragu me bete vili katande desra mina vili kabra amo do menes kayande radova baku me lira sizotani baraka vili ande niska bro uskelia radina pogande kalete mezakonya binande jaba raka te bregete masode rada. Amen. 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 And I always make it a point to just mention the fact that, you know, when we're making these prayers, we're making it for every woman, regardless of the space that you occupy. So these prayers are not just for people who own businesses. They're not just for people who have careers, who are, you know, on the career path. They're not just for people who are in ministry or family. Regardless, whatever of those, whichever of those four fields you occupy, this is for you. Even if you're looking at, well, I'm, you know, I'm just a homemaker. There's nothing like just a homemaker. That is a whole field that you occupy. That is a whole, you know, mountain that you, 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 you know, you are sent to. Could it be that you might encounter a divine strategy on how to maybe train children in a particular way, or maybe make food that children like to eat and, you know, healthy food in a way that children may like to eat that we see people who come out, you know, each day with a cookbook or, you know, a, uh, like a parenting method or something and boom, it just takes off. So even if that is you wondering like, oh, well, I guess these prayers are not about me. No, no, no. They are about every one of us, regardless of what we do. There is that divine strategy that we can have. Even if your core calling is not even as a homemaker, and maybe you are a career woman, and so your thoughts are, well, how do I, you know, do this properly while still maintaining my home front? God can give you that strategy on how to show up like you need to for your business, for your career, and not lose your place and your voice in your home. So that is what we're asking for. That is what we are believing on God for when we ask for these things. So I know that every woman who has asked for this sincerely from her heart, God is going to reveal to you that divine strategy to do what you need to do, to show up in business, to show up in your career, to show up in your home. And if you are also in ministry, to show up there as well. Divine strategy to balance it. Because that's one of the things that people keep asking women. Oh, how do you balance it up? Nobody asks men that. So it's clear that so much is dumped on our plate and we, we have to show up. So we're asking God for that divine strategy. When we're asking for it, it's not just maybe for business. Some of us, that's what we need. The strategy to balance it all. 
because people will come and meet somebody who's chasing career. So, oh, how do you balance it? So many people have to, 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 to sacrifice one so that they can show up in another. So some people, it's like they sacrifice the you know, ability to pay attention and raise their children or, or, or be present in their homes just so that they can hit this goal in their business. Some people have to quit their jobs. Some people have to quit their business just so that they can be present in their home. But if you are a person who desires to be able to do all of it, there is a strategy that's available in God for you to do it and do it well and show up in these different places without one being sacrificed for the other. So I ask in the name of Jesus that for every woman here, who is being pulled in the different directions, you know, in the different spaces she occupies. And what she's needed from you right now is the strategy to balance it all so that she shows up and shows up well in these different areas and does what she does and do what she does with excellence. Father, I ask that you, re you reveal that strategy. You reveal that strategy to her in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We just have two more prayer points and we're done for the morning. The next one I want to ask us, you know, us to pray is, um, is about God actually announcing or sending a sound out. I'll give an example. Mm. There was something that I purchased in 2018 for my daughter. And I bought it off of Amazon because I um, the stores that carried that item, they were too expensive. I knew the concept that I wanted. I had the whole thing sketched out, but that one item that I needed was too expensive. And so for me, even though I needed it, like I, I was determined to use it in decorating her room, I was like, I don't think that it's worth it at this amount. So I kept searching and searching and stumbled upon the most, would I say obscure item on Amazon. It looked exactly like what I wanted. They only had it in one color, but I was determined that I would take it and I would spray it, you know, and, and DIY it into the exact color that I wanted and set it up the way that I wanted, you know, put all the attachments and make it my own. And I was actually, actually afraid to order it because it was just maybe a, a handful of reviews, maybe, maybe no more than 10, really. You know, so this was in 2018. I was like, well, I hope it's not a whole mess when I receive it. And I received it and it was actually great. And actually, I'm still using it today in her room. You know, and um, that was just, you know, I was happy to have found it at the time that I did. Now, something led me back to that seller store on Amazon, right? And it was maybe a couple of months ago, and I just ended up back on that seller store. And do you know that this same item that, like I said, had only maybe 10-ish reviews, if that's on there, like barely a lot of reviews, that item suddenly had hundreds, hundreds of reviews. And if you know anything about Amazon, like it's not everybody who's coming back to leave reviews. So if you're saying hundreds of reviews, that means there are a lot more sales that this person actually made. And I was like, wow, this thing was kind of like a hidden gem when I purchased it just like four years ago. And now this person has like almost like heading to a thousand reviews, which means there's even way more purchases and sales. And I just held that thing in my heart and said, wow, there's definitely something that can happen to your business that sort of announces it to people. So we hear of people who they've been maybe doing certain things and, you know, they've just been doing it in the background and everything. Even, you know, I would speak from the perspective of being a content creator, right? So maybe you've been creating content, you've been doing these little videos here and there and all of that. And then one day there's one video that you do and you share it and next thing, millions of views and next thing, boom, the whole thing opens up and you, you know, you are, you are operating in a much different space. So as I prepared this morning, I just heard it like, you know, we can ask God to be the one to announce us, announce us. The Bible says of Jesus, you know, God was the one who testified of him. He says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He said, hear ye him. There is a hear ye him grace that is available. And sometimes when we say this thing, like oh, I'm packing everything, but I'm telling you the truth. Because you can be making a sound, you can be shouting and it's like you're shouting in a vacuum in a vacuum sealed room. So you are shouting, sh nobody outside is hearing you. Your voice is as loud as can be. Your product is the best. You're doing the best work in your organization, on your team. But except you are announced, except people are actually hearing you, then it's hard for you to gain the traction you actually need. So we're asking God to announce us today. And so we're asking God for the grace, that hear ye him grace. That was, that, that was very profound. What was he then doing before? Well, God was the one that released that direction, that, that, that instruction. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye 
him. That's the grace we're asking for today in whatever we're doing, in our jobs, in our business, whatever. That Lord, let there be a hear ye him grace that backs me this year, that backs me, that announces me. Wherever people need to hear about my services, wherever people need to hear about my skills, wherever people need to hear about me, let them be a hear ye him grace upon my life that announces me in those rooms for contracts, for deals, for promotions, whatever that looks like. Let's open our mouth and ask for that grace to rest upon us even this year. Sekante le de isko bena areba bata miska barakume besante lisko bremenda salia rada ve kabone kadante sibre kadomelia raba katamonde sibre kabali katande rate kabrege deke sote brege tema kabali bante la kabreno omeskili la rada da kabeni bante le abu sibre kabina kabene keri dosizo preti baka mela rada katande brege tema Announce us in the years of leaders who need to hear about our work. Announce us in the years of recruiters who need to pick up our resume and advance to the next step. Maso se te bregeto, me pete braga da katima, me so se brata bante bregete ke mosko tilikande, rageta mante bregete ke marabude sabone kiva, e pita brega sakuria mante le sikande, radada da kato, se bante de ke marabude sabate, inde skoria bete ke mante ka suka sati ali, and the last prayer point we're going to take this morning is actually for the grace for speed because many of us you know if we sit down and we're honest with ourselves we would know that the kind of projections we've made for a year in terms of the mileage we're looking to cover in our work in our in a career and a business or whatever, honestly, based on where we are today, it's going to take divine help for us to actually get there. So we're going to just very quickly before we close this morning, ask for that grace for speed. That's what we need at this point. Given the, the goal we need to hit and where we are today, we are going to need divine speed to accompany us. So we're just going to open our mouth and ask for divine speed. It's that simple. Father, we ask for the grace for speed. The grace for speed, the grace for speed to cover ground, to cover ground quickly this year. Bascone Sante Legetelima, Riga to Kasube Bete Maro Bagate Mandilia, Rika Taka Bregete, that you release that grace for divine speed upon every woman, every woman here in the Bible. Be the Holy Ghost, be the Holy Ghost. And I thank you for the name of Jesus. Lord, I was in pain ground. Nothing was in that spirit of my life. Oh, my life. Oh, my gosh. I was in pain ground. 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 I remember a time, even in my own career, where I felt like I was, um, I felt like I was behind, and not because I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing, but because I just didn't know better, right, about the system and things like that. And you know, even when I was feeling discouraged, and I went to God about it. You would think that He would just, you know, like just help me keep moving forward. But I experienced this thing that I'm talking about here: divine speed. Because where it seemed that people had gone ahead of me, by the time God showed up in that matter, it was almost like he just like flung me forward. And I found myself on a par with those who seemed to have gone farther ahead of me. In fact, in some cases, even ahead of them. 
So this is really a real grace that God can release on your life. And so you'll be in a situation, you'll be in an organization where people are saying, oh, it doesn't work this way. This is not the schedule which, you know, at which we promote people or we advance people or whatever. Like it doesn't even matter what it is because God is willing to break protocol to show up for people who have been marginalized, his children who have been marginalized. So that was something that I experienced. And, you know, when I, when I told people, when I told other people what happened, they were like, never, because there's a firm policy in the books of the company that this doesn't happen. I said, well, I don't know about that, right? I can only tell you what I, you know, experienced. So I'm telling you right now that this is what happened to me. So there is such a thing. And so Father, in the name of Jesus, I release that grace for divine spirit on everybody who, you know, feels like they are behind, who needs this acceleration to actually hit the targets that they have on their goals for this year in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask for that grace for divine spirit upon everyone in the name of Jesus. And Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for every woman who was present today, Lord. I thank you because indeed you sent your word for your people. And I know that you who has sent the word about your, the Bible lets me know that it does not return to you void but it must accomplish that thing that you sent it to do. So I ask, Lord, that even the word that you sent this morning begin to actually follow every woman here till it is accomplished, until they arrive at the place where they are indeed sitting at that table that you prepare for them in the presence of their enemies. Father, I ask that this word follow them. This word continue to follow them until it is fulfilled, until it is accomplished in their life. That I ask that this word begin to shift circumstances, begin to shift, you know, situations around them until it is fulfilled in their lives in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I ask that those who are believing on you for divine strategy, that you begin to wake them up, Lord, from, you know, from sleep and begin to speak to them, instruct them in Jesus' name. Those who need to be able to hear your instruction, who have battled in the past, hearing your voice, and as a result, not able to, you know, know the direction to go. Father, I ask that you open their ears, open their eyes, that they may be able to function, you know, from divine instruction in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you because at the end of it all, like I said, and I always say, Lord, we will testify because we will know that of the truth. This year was like no other for us by the time we're at the end of this year. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Tomorrow is the Amen. final day of the prayer. God bless everyone who has been present so far. And I do have this instruction that we need to come tomorrow because we're going to be anointing ourselves. So when we come tomorrow, please just, you know, be present with your anointing oil. If you're in a place that's discreet, that would be great. Like, because I know it's 7 a.m. and, you know, 8, 9 o'clock in different places, but it's just a little oil, right? So if you can just have it with you, please have it with you because we will be, you know, making certain other pronouncements even as directed by the Holy Spirit spirits and i know that god will do a massive thing in our lives this year thank you everyone and have a wonderful day god bless you all thank you. bye, bye. Thank you. bye.